Well, first up tonight, the International Monetary Fund is maintaining a 6.2% expansion of Ghana's economy for this year. This is far bigger than the expected 4.7% growth rate it projected for last year. Charles Nixon Yabwa starts us off with this report. Although it did not give any reasons for the projected high growth rate for this year, the expected increase in economic activities following easing of COVID-19 restrictions will trigger that improve aggregate demand and supply, exports as well as government and household spending will influence the expansion of the economy, which before the COVID-19 pandemic has been growing at a rate of 6% on the average. In its October 2021 World Economic Report, the IMF said Ghana's economy will grow by 6.2% in 2022. This is higher than forecast by many research institutions cited by Joy Business. The higher growth rate indicates that businesses will be able to generate more revenue from sales and expand into the future. The economy grew by 6.6% in the third quarter of last year. According to the Ghana Statistical Service, education, health and social works, information and communication, as well as hotel and restaurant were some of the major drivers of the growth rate. Joining us for a conversation tonight is partner Deloitte Ghana, Yao Latte. Great to have you on our program tonight. Happy New Year to you, Yao. How achievable is this projection by the IMF? Yes, Happy New Year. And Okay, we seem to have um, issues with the internet connection to Yao Latte. We will uh, fix that and get back to him um, as quickly as we can. Um, if not, we can move on to the next story. Can you, can you hear me, Yao? Okay, we'll fix the internet connection problems and then uh, get back to Yao Latte. Uh, for more on that, well, the Social Security and National Insurance Trust NIT, in consultation with the National Pensions Regulatory Authority, has increased pensioners' monthly payment by 10% beginning the 27th of January. What this means is that all pensioners on the SNIT payroll as of the 31st of December 2021 will enjoy this increment. Take a listen to the Director General of SNIT, John Ofori Tenkwang, explaining the factors that influence this upward adjustment. We look at uh, targeted inflation, and what that means is that, uh, you know, we, we, we look at what the forecast is, what the inflation is forecasted to be in the year within which we are paying the pensions. So right now, the, wherever inflation is notwithstanding, I think my brother was throwing out the number of 10 point something, uh, the targeted inflation, the forecast for inflation for the current year that we are in is 9.68%, right? Nine point, is it 9.68? Right. So, so forecasted inflation is what we're going to look at. Uh, and, you know, sometimes you may get it right, sometimes you may get it wrong, you know, but in general, if you look at a historic plot of what we've done, we've, we've tracked it very well. You know, sometimes a little overshoot, sometimes a bit of an undershoot, but in general, the trend matches it. So that is, that is what we do. We, um, uh, and then the, um, another factor we look at, sometimes we also look at uh, wage inflation, right? Uh, when, when we use part of people's premiums that they uh, pay currently, to also pay part of the pensions, in addition to using money from our investments and so on and so forth. So if you don't have contributors, uh, salaries increasing uh, at uh, a rate that matches your indexation, or you do not have the number of people that are joining the scheme increasing, you may end up in a situation where there is a mismatch between the uh, premiums that you are collection you are you are collecting 
and the payments that you are uh, making. Abdullah Mashoud is executive director for the Africa Center for Retirement Research. He has been reacting to the announcement by SNIT. The scheme is on its knees, um, and those positions have been burdened by the uh, past two actual valuation reports. Remember, we threw out that uh, in 2014, when the actual valuation was conducted, it indicated that um, the scheme is set, uh, the, the funds of the scheme is set for depletion by 2042. Then uh, three years later, when another uh, actual valuation was conducted, it brought the fund depletion date to 2037, indicating that uh, the scheme is, uh, I mean, uh, the scheme solvency is being questioned. Mm. That notwithstanding, even though the scheme is, uh, what do you call it, uh, it's on its knees, we haven't gotten to the point where we have to be looking at cutting down benefits as a result of uh, the scheme facing sustainability challenges. Let's remember, uh, pension indexation is a provision that is made. That is, it's a, it's a provision that is, uh, has been provided for in Section 80 of the National Pension Act. It indicates that uh, the Social Security Administration, in consultation with the Board of the Authority of NPRA, would index pensions annually by, uh, you know, uh, on the basis of wage inflation or any other rate as may be determined by the scheme. Okay. So uh, what we are saying is that in this case, it's clearly provided. I mean, whether we like it or not, we have to index pensions. And the objective of indexing pension is to keep the purchasing power of pensioners constant because prices of goods and services are increasing in the larger economy. So definitely you want to maintain the purchasing power of pensioners. So it is the objective for indexing pensions. Now, we need to ask ourselves whether the 10% overall that has been, uh, what do you call it, uh, that, that has been given for 2022 is enough. Uh, from uh, where I sit, 10% overall indexation is not enough. If you look at the, the, the larger uh, development, as far as economic indices are concerned, prices of goods and services, I mean, if you look at all of that, you realize that overall indexation that have been thrown out, that is 10% that have been thrown out by the uh, security scheme, is not enough. Well, back to our earlier story, the International Monetary Fund uh, maintaining a 6.2% expansion of Ghana's economy for this year. Uh, Yao Latte, partner at Deloitte Ghana, joins me. Hopefully we can hear you, Yao. How achievable is this projection by the IMF? Yes. Um, so, uh, good evening to you and your viewers, as well as listeners. Um, so, the projection from, uh, by the IMF, uh, as you can see, is slightly above what government even projects for 2022. So in the last budget that was uh, published or released by government, our projected GDP growth in uh, 2022 is 5.8%. So the IMF estimate is slightly above, uh, it's actually above what government projected. Um, there are quite a number of strong indications that obviously uh, of this projection from the IMF you would recall that a, a few weeks ago, uh, Ghana has released uh, the growth rate for the third quarter of 2021. The growth rate for the third quarter of 2021 was 6.6%. Proud to that, the first two quarters of the year have recorded a growth rate of 3.1% and 3.9% respectively. So the third quarter of the year grew by about 6.6%. That is that was a remarkable growth. And if that is anything to go by, we expect the last quarter of the year, which has seen and which saw a lot of or increased economic activity, to also witness some uh, impressive growth. And so if the growth rate in 2021 uh, is anything to go by, then I think that the IMF estimate is not over ambitious. Um, or we, we still have to throw a, in some caution that we are not over the rules as far as COVID is concerned. And so we may not necessarily grow at the rate at which we are growing before COVID. And uh, the growth rate as estimated by the IMF is almost close or even uh, higher than some of the growth rate that was recorded before COVID. And so I think it's slightly ambitious, but it's something that we can achieve if all things uh, stay equal or 
COVID does not have some adverse impact on our mm. protected group. So the third quarter figures released by the Ghana Statistical Service uh, showed industry lagging behind somewhat. So this certainly makes the case for the reversal of the benchmark discounts uh, to aid local industries. Now, as you know it, government is torn between that, uh, helping the AGI, and also the demands from traders and the importing community. What do you advise? How does the government handle this? Yeah, so I, I think uh, I'm happy with the approach that has been taken um, uh, by government. I think we, we need further consultation. Um, the effect uh, is one that you can say it may be counterproductive if you go one full length on one and then forget the other. I think we need a broader consultation. There are some items that uh, obviously cannot or is not produced internally. And so if you, um, say if you put a blanket uh, taxes or you do start to put in a blanket across board, you may have the effect of affecting or adversely affecting our projected economic growth. So I think the broader consultation should aim at ensuring that uh, some targeted items are excluded from the list and those that need to suffer uh, such imposition, the benchmark, are actually imposed to protect um, the domestic production. So the broader consultation should uh, help us uh, get the right uh, list and also <coughs> uh, come up with something that will support the growth for 2022. Let's talk about uh, our debt, because uh, just as we were coming on the air, we're getting some news on the issuance calendar, which is uh, that government will borrow 3.78 billion CDs in the first quarter of the year to finance part of the budget. Your reaction? Yes, yeah, so I think that was clearly stated in the budget. Um, the government uh, indicated that in the short to medium term, there was not going to be any external borrowing, so we were not going to hear of any euro bond in the short term. But government was going to rely on some indication and also uh, some form of borrowing for the domestic market. And so, uh, obviously, there is a gap to be filled. Uh, uh, we run on a, a budget deficit situation, so our projected revenue for the entire year, 100 uh, billion uh, CDs, uh, as we projected for the year. It's not all going to be financed with uh, revenue. To say our expenditure for the year is not going to be financed with the revenue that we projected. So once there's a deficit, then we have to find a way to support that expenditure. And one of the ways is borrowing. And so we expect that borrowing to happen, mm. uh, more so given the current situation that we find ourselves, that some of government policies that was aimed or that were aimed at raising domestic revenue have been delayed. Um, so some of the revenue measures have been delayed, they have not been implemented, or they are yet to roll out uh, those policies. We, we just seen some of these income tax amendments are passed, but it will be enforced in the first quarter of the year. So you will not have the immediate impact. In that, that being the case, it means that you have to borrow support for to uh, close the gap that we are seeing in our revenue shortfall. Meantime, uh, inflation, prices of items are going up uh on the market, and we are going to go out further. Usually we'll talk about what government can do to cushion the public. This time, I want to ask you what individuals and businesses can do. Yes, so I, I think it, it's clear that we saw this in the last quarter of 2021, and it does also um, will start the year, the, or the subsequent years with it. Uh, usually, at the end of the year, price of goods and services uh, increase or goes up slightly because of the increased demand. So demand usually drives price up. So that's one factor. And then secondly, there were increases in some commodities in the course of the year, which have had or had ripple impact on uh, uh, other things. So for instance, increase in transport fares obviously will have effect on other goods and services. Right. Increase in pet petroleum products will have impact on goods and services. So some of these items that were increased or the price of these items that were increased will certainly have impact on what the end user, end user pays for it. I think for uh, end users or consumers like uh, myself and yourself and then the industry, uh, we need to also prepare ourselves to pay more for some of the services 
that uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll be consuming. What we need to be mindful of is to uh, watch our expenditure. Mm. There are some things or some expenditure items that you can repair or even cut down on some expenditure. Uh, you know that a lot of these taxes are indirect taxes. What okay. we mean is that the more you spend, the more you pay. So if you spend less, you pay less in taxes. So you should just be more of our expenditure. Thank you so much, uh, Yaolati, the partner, Deloitte Ghana. We couldn't see your face, but it's always great to have you on Business Life. Thanks very much indeed. Still to come on the program, Coco Carriers have suspended their sit-down strike after a week of agitation to demand an increment in their wages. Coco Board says it will continue to engage the workers. Let's see how we are able to get an improved conditions of service. Yes, these concerns have been forwarded to management. We'll look at it. To business life. Now, Coco Carriers have suspended their sit down strike after a week of agitation to demand an increment in their wages and better conditions of service. Coco Carriers at Tema, Takwade, and Kumase abandoned duty and insisted the 62 pesos they received per bag. Uh, for carrying cocoa should be increased to one city. Now it appears that a consensus has been reached. We have this latest report from Kumase. It is for us to continue to engage and based on that see how we are able to get an improved conditions of service. Yes, these concerns have been forwarded to management. We'll look at it and then we shall engage them. Are you willing to The decision to pay uh... for the haulage of one bag of cocoa, 62 pesos is paid to a career. Two days after the sit down strike, 20 pesos was added to the 62 pesos, but this was rejected by the careers. However, after a series of meetings with management, the Coco Careers have decided to accept the daily 82 pesos wage. Raymond Atanga is chairman of the Coco Careers Association. came to a resolution that uh, we are citizens of this country and looking at things right now, it's not CMC that is suffering because CMC is not an individual company, but our economy, we are suffering right now because we are bearing a cost that is not bringing profit and then it's going to affect citizens at large and not only Cocoa Board. So we came to understanding that at least we can be considerate uh, to our nation, the motherland, our motherland Ghana, and then continue to do the work with some conditions. They are not paying us, so. they are not even, even, even the sister to you, they are not even paying. The Coco careers were worried about the hazardous nature of their work. A number of them exposed to chemicals have been reported ill. Others injured themselves due to the vigorous nature of the work. My dangerous is even dangerous because the bag is 64 kilo, and I carried it two times. I have to carry the bag. I have to remove 2,000 bags, and they have to sample it, send it to a lab, and come back before I will use that 2,000 bags and stack it to like a, to, to like a electricity pole. And even when you reach the house, you can't even sleep. Chemical, chemicals is in the chemicals is even the cocoa. They are killing and the chemicals is killing us. Last year, 10 of our carriers died. If you look for more, more so that friend is some more pass out to a half round. He said, I brought a few of my colleagues to work here with me, but they couldn't. Mr. Atanga says the government has assured the association. 
All right, and so that's uh, our report from uh, Kumasi on uh, the plight of the Koho carriers there. They have indicated that they are back to work, and like you heard Fifi Boafu indicate at the top of that report, they're going to engage with uh, the workers. And that's Business Life tonight. Thanks for watching. More news on our website, myjoyonline.com forward slash business. There you go. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you same time tomorrow.